Hello everybody, today we are going to look at anaerobic gram-positive bacilli spore formers. So they are gram-positive because they retain the chemical crystal violet, hence they appear as purple rods under the microscope following gram stain. So the bacteria that we are going to look at today are all classified under the genus Clostridium. Clostridium is a genus of gram-positive bacteria belonging to the firmicutes and they are obligate anaerobes or strict anaerobes capable of producing endospores. So the first bacteria that we are going to look at in this lecture is Clostridium perfringens. Clostridium perfringens are short, white and they form spores, they are gram-positive bacilli. They exhibit anaerobic hemolysis of blood and characteristically a double zone of hemolysis. I'll show you what this means in a while. The Nagler test for lecitinase is positive and the reverse camp test is positive. So a bit about the Nagler test. The Nagler test is a biochemical test that is used to identify organisms which liberate phospholipases, for example lecitinases and in this case uh, Clostridium perfringens. So the alpha toxin of Clostridium perfringens has phospholipase activity and hence when grown on a medium containing egg yolk phospholipid the organism can break down this insoluble triglyceride. So here we have Clostridium perfringens growing on sheep blood tryptocase soy agar and here this is the double zone of hemolysis and the inner zone uh, is a zone of beta hemolysis which is the complete hemolysis of blood and the, the larger zone that is circumvallating the beta, inner beta zone is the alpha zone and the alpha zone is, uh, is uh, the partial hemolysis of blood. Here we have uh, Clostridium perfringens under microscopic view. Clostridium perfringens are anaerobic. They cause food poisoning and gas gangrene. And clinical manifestations of food poisoning include vomiting, diarrhea and fever within 8 to 16 hours following the consumption of contaminated food. The boxcar shaped alpha toxin is the toxin that is primarily responsible for myonecrosis. Our next bacteria, Clostridium botulinum. Clostridium botulinum are spore formers. They are gram positive bacilli and grows at uh, basic pH under anaerobic conditions, for example, in improperly canned food. And diagnosis is clinical, but an antibody test is done to identify the toxin. So here we have uh, colonies of uh, Clostridium botulinum. Clostridium botulinum under microscopic view. Clostridium botulinum are anaerobic, causes botulism, infant botulism and wound botulism and, in, and they are commonly found in soil and honey. They make several toxins but the one that causes botulism is a potent neurotoxin that cleaves synaptobrevin. The result is that nerve cells cannot release acetylcholine at the neuromuscular junction. So a bit about synaptobrevin. Synaptobrevins are small integral membrane proteins of secretory vesicles that are part of the vesicle associated membrane protein family. Next bacteria, Clostridium tetany. Clostridium tetany are tennis racket shaped and they also form spores. The gram positive bacilli and are rarely cultured. They are grown in Chardler. Agar. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it properly. Anyway, uh, they exhibit flagellal motility and their spores are extremely hardy as they are resistant to heat and most antiseptics. So here we have uh, colonies of Clostridium tetany growing on Shadla agar. A bit about Shadla agar. Shadla agar has superior nutritive properties and a low oxidation reduction potential. Redox is a redox is a measure of the tendency of a chemical species to acquire electrons and thereby be reduced. That's redox. 
So Schadler agar can support the growth of anaerobes from the intestinal and digestive tracts and other organ sites without the interference of the accompanying aerobic flora. So here you have a clostridium tetany and microscopic view and they do appear like tennis rackets. Clostridium tetany are anaerobic, causes tetanus or lockjaw. They are toxin, it's a neurotoxin that cleaves synaptic breathing like botulism toxin, which is closely resembles. The, the, prime, the target neurons are the 1A afferent neurons, particularly within the anterior horn. Next bacteria, Clostridium tet difficile. Clostridium difficile are spore formers. They are gram-positive bacilli and are anaerobic and fastidious, fastidious or finicky or fussy. They are spore formers and a toxigenic culture remains gold standard. So, uh, toxigenic culture is, actually, is, is a culture when it's a process in which organisms are cultured on selective media and tested for toxin production. So a, the A and B toxin identification is done by uh, ELISA or enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay. We have uh, clostrid colonies of Clostridium difficile. Clostridium difficile on the microscopic view. Clostridium difficile are anaerobic, causes pseudomembranous colitis after a patient is treated with antibiotics, especially clindamycin and ampicillin that suppresses normal GI flora or gastrointestinal flora. Pseudomembranous uh, colitis in rare cases uh, can progress to toxic megacolon which can be life-threatening. And toxic megacolon or megacolon toxicum uh, is an acute form of colonic distension and it is characterized by a very dilated colon hence the term megacolon accompanied by abdominal distension, bloating and sometimes fever, abdominal pain or shock. Two toxins, the A toxin stimulates fluid release and causes mucosal damage, the B toxin on the other, B toxin on the other hand blocks protein synthesis. Uh, that's all for today, thank you.